Hello, I'm Matthew. Lovely to see you all. I work at the University of Bristol in the Department of Hispanic, Portuguese and Latin American Studies, form part of the Creative History Cluster that will coordinate and all sorts of fun things. And I love the Brickstone Institute from the bottom of my heart. Hello, everybody. Here we are from, from Chile, from the south of Chile, and we are really glad to be here. Um, I am a filmmaker and also academic. Um, I focus on documentary and digital and interactive storytelling. Uh, and I used to work in the past also with Mandy, Rose that is around there. We, we've done some projects before in, in when I used to live in, in the UK, studying at Goldsmiths. Thank you. Hello, I'm Trinidad. I'm in Santiago at the moment. Uh, for me, everybody's new here, except Matthew. Um, my background is theater, performance, device theater, uh, post-traumatic theater, uh, but then sound performance, um, uh, teaching in the university, and mostly now doing voice and scripts. But I'm an artist. <laughs> yes, that's it. Amazing. Thanks, Trudy. So I'm going to introduce things and then um, ask some questions to Maria and Trudy and we'll play some clips and then we'll show the film in about 25 minutes or so. So the artworks we're talking about today have been produced in the midst of a crucial transformation in Chilean history, which is of obvious relevance for Latin America and for the rest of the world, absolutely. Chile has been undergoing a transition towards democracy since the end of the military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet three decades ago. A transition towards democracy and then a transition towards truth and reconciliation. But consistent throughout that transition has been the neoliberal economic model, which has meant that as GDP has gone up, so has inequality within society. And the estallido social or the social revolution, which erupted in Chile in 2019, burst the banks of fear of hierarchy and the status quo, massive occupations uh, of the streets and public protest and public joy. Um, Republic rebellion. All of this coalesced after a few months towards calls for a new constitution because the previous constitution was a product of the dictatorship. And where we are now is that a constitutional convention has been elected under the presidency of Elisa Longcon, a Mapuche linguist and university lecturer. And they're writing a constitution which seems to be participatory. Um, sustainable and inclusive. However, presidential elections are just around the corner as they always seem to be, and politics is being polarized, the candidates from the left and one from the really quite far right. So where will Chile be going? Will it be left with a beautiful text of a new constitution, but a president who is instead indebted to and committed to maintaining the status quo? Or will Chile in a, in a year or two's time be an absolute beacon for the world with a new constitution and a new vision for society? What does this all mean? Where are we standing as, which is the title of, of the film? So we, Maria Trini and I, are super grateful to the Brickstow Institute for supporting us when we weren't sure what we were doing. We received a first grant from the University Sound Stories, which led, was a, enabled us to produce the six episodes of the Burst of Things podcast. And then a second Brigstow grant, Constitutional Therapy, which allowed us to produce the film, which you're gonna see in a moment. The Estallido Social, the social revolution in Chile, is unfinished and it's uncertain where it's going. And that's true of our project too. Both the Estallido and our project have three stages. 
the Estaido's first stage was on the streets, that explosion of anger and rebellion, and then a second stage in which that was channeled into the Constitutional Assembly and the new document. The third stage will be next year with a new president, the new constitution and a new vision of society. Our project we've conceived of as a running commentary on a history that is not finished yet. So our first stage was the podcast and an attempt to find a voice that could capture these massive transformations. The second stage for us was the short film, an attempt to visualize these deep transformations in social relations. And the third stage, well, what will the, what will the third stage be? So that leads me really to, to bring Maria and Trini into our, our conversation. So the first question is for Trini. I mean, tell us if you can, what it's been like being an artist in Chile during the Estado and during the, the COVID pandemic. Thanks, Matthew, for that introduction. Very interesting to hear what is going on here from there. It seems so crazy what we're living. And to answer your question, I th we think that being an artist in Chile is really something horrible because it's a, it's a daily struggle uh, because we have uh, very few industries uh, that live on public funds. Uh, their resources are very limited as, and thousands of artists are fighting for them. Well-established artists as well as new ones. Uh, and at the same time, the unions are arguing for higher wages, better contracts and professionalization. So, I think that uh, being an artist here is an act of love and resistance, always. And during the estallido, it became, for me, for the first time, because I think that people, artists that live through dictatorship, uh, had some interesting motive to raise their voice. But then we came to this neoliberal stage for like 30 years that we were like sleep, very sleep. And when the out this outburst came for the first time, I felt that, okay, now is my turn. I have to do something. I have to stand. Uh, but then the pandemic came and it was total void uh, because there was no work at all. And uh, the government didn't help us at all. So the state barely recognized arts. And in the constitution, there's no part that recognize artistic professions. And we're struggling for just 1% of the annual budget to, spend, to be spent on culture. So we're fighting that in this possible new constitution. So uh, if I have to force myself to find a note of hope, is that our work is well situated to explore the concepts of failure and precarity. And for us, failure is our modus operandi and part of our creative process. But failure and precarity are like shadows, I think. And on the other hand, precarity forces us to be awake, to be attentive and to be creative, uh, being aware that our existence as artists uh, is itself an act of resistance. Means that politics is always central and that we must be attentive to what is happening in our country as we uh, express ourselves. I think. That's amazing. Thank you, <laughs> it, it started with being an artist is horrible, but it got... It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> in, in comparison, huh? maybe in some countries it's worse. But if I have to compare, I think with you guys, it, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so let's turn to Maria then. So Maria, tell us why living through this moment, you chose to focusing on capturing these historic moments through sound. Uh, yes, thank you, Matthew, for the question. Um, well, when the social revolution started, 
Um, we both live with Trini near the center of, the, of Santiago, Plaza Italia, which now has been renamed by the citizens uh, uh, as Plaza Dignidad, which means Dignity Square. So suddenly the city started to, the landscape change. Uh, we experienced how everything, all the people were outside. The walls were being covered with phrases and slogans of the revolution. And, and it was really interesting at the beginning to be, to be there outside the streets and, and seeing how everybody was finally awake after so many years of um, <clears throat> a capitalist, capitalist system that really sort of slept us. And um, this was really interesting and exciting to begin with, but then suddenly we found ourselves saturated by the images being shared from everybody on social media, citizens on their phones, capturing everything, what happening, all the filmmakers, documentary filmmakers outside, uh, trying to, to capture the moment, uh, and journalists. Also, the images were polarized by the traditional media, which tended to focus in many cases on violence, just violent scenes and looting. And also the images supported the terrifying discourses promoted on TV by the government and the president. So suddenly we were in a dictatorship because all the militars uh, went out to the streets. So um, at that moment, we realized that, that, that we were saturated by images and maybe the sound was the format we should be exploring. It was sort of intuitive. Uh, also, we, we with Trini, we wanted to collaborate in a um, sort of podcast project before. So this was the, the exactly moment that we thought uh, could be interesting to start collaborating. And we realized that the city sounded really different. Uh, it sounded hopeful, uncertain, fearful. So on one side, the, mili the military in the streets, the sound of their helicopters, helicopters, but at the same time, we heard the sound of empowered citizens, uh, sound of Teflon saucepans sus being bang bang. Uh, we call it cacerolazos, which were like really common before the dictatorship, and suddenly we were all caceroleando. Um, so we thought that working with with sound would be a more creative and also subjective way of telling this story. And, and ask ourselves what it means to understand uh, a story like that, like this, from the perspective of sound. And we also came with a, with, up with the idea of, of listening to this revolution through the perspectives of the objects that have, to, that have come to represent these different polarized ideologies. So um, like a story of a pot, a story of a turnstile, a yellow vest, which was um, used uh, for for um, right hand guide to so like, like for more for the right hand people. White supremacist. Uh, so, rather than in France as as you know like a citizen, uh, more a citizens movement the, in in this country was completely uh, the opposite. Uh, how was to tell the story from the perspective of a military tank, and then finally from the constitution, this, this um, the last episode. So we tried to establish some distance from, from these polarized images and, and polarized moment by seeing how these objects were like representing our society and, and also our current, our current political identity. So now we would like to share with you an extract of the first episode of the Burst of Things, launched in August 2020, in the middle of the pandemic in Chile, through Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts, a social media campaign, and also a web experience. And its international premiere was, was at Sheffield Dog Fest last year. So this is part of the story of. Olga, the innocent pot. When the social unrest erupted, 
We were all in the kitchen. That night, I fell asleep in the sink. From there, I could hear the shouts coming from outside the window. A crowd was advancing down the streets. They sounded happy. Then Martin came, the son of Mrs. Jimena. He was agitated and excited. He rummaged through the drawers and cabinets. And finally, he took me and the wooden spoon, Susie. I had never left the kitchen before the day, Your Honor. And the truth is, I don't understand why he chose me. But I am so happy he did. It gave me a new potential. For the first time during this protest, I had a voice. Being on the streets became part of a daily routine. It was not always the same pots, but there were always some familiar ones there. I made new friends, and even, I have to confess, I had a romance with a frying pan. Oof, it was... <laughs> I'm sorry. We were played by women, children, adults, and older folks. I no longer felt like a cooking pot, rather a Tibetan bowl. Until one day, they showed up. These humans that the prosecutor is defending. A policeman grabbed me by the handle, and I needed to defend myself. I tried to escape, but he clenched me harder, and I felt an uncontrolled rage. So I punched him in the face. But it was self-defense. It was him or me. So fun watching people listening to things. Um, so uh, we maybe should have said that the podcast was produced in both Spanish and and English versions. But so the qu the question is for for Trini, um, what what do you think you discovered about the the podcasting format and your 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 voices through making the best of things? Yes. Uh, when we turned to podcasting, it was something still relatively new. It's a new field in, not new, but yeah, a bit new in Chile, in Latin America. Um, and we started this project wondering about the Latin American voice of podcasting. Because we've learned uh, about podcasts from listening to English speaking podcasts. So we're, we realized that it is a challenge faced by all of us who are wanting to create podcasts uh, to try to find a voice, a voice that is from this geography, from this territory, with these humans, uh, this language, Spanish, and these problems. Um, and we attempt to combine our disciplines and make a series where the objects speak, but mix it with the real sound passages from the protest uh, in order to find an authentic way of uh, creating this, this voice. Um, so we discovered uh, that the search of a, of a voice, of an authentic sound, is something that motivates us. Uh, but it's an ongoing question because this is the first experience. This is the first time we do podcasting. And uh, the first time we wanted to do it in Spanish and in English, so English speakers could hear how this revolution sounded. Uh, but it's something uh, new for us. So we think uh, discovering a voice is something, it's an ongoing thing because this voice is, al is super alive. I think Latin American voices are emerging and it's moving and it's changing. So we're like in the middle of, of trying to, to, to understand what we're doing while we're doing it. So it's a very active uh, thing. I think. And saying this, uh, I want uh, to show you, we want to show you the um, a bit, an extract of the last uh, episode of the series that was constitutional therapy. This, uh, this episode we launched uh, days before the, um, how do you say this in English? Constitutional convention? No. The, ref the referendum. The referendum. Yeah. The referendum. It was a huge thing here, and we launched it days before the referendum. 
So it was a very interesting moment, an historic moment, I would say, for us. So in the referendum, citizens were voting if they wanted to change the constitution or not ch change it. And uh, 80% like we... of the population said we wanted to voted. change. And that was super new. So uh, in this episode, we send our dear constitution to a therapy, to an hypnotic and very cathartic therapy. So we want to show you a bit of it. We all have something to heal from. Change is good and necessary, but you have to be prepared. And that's what we're gonna do in these sessions. Prepare. Prepare for what? To accept who you are. It's the beginning of healing. Have you thought that all these changes have been only textual, superficial, and have not affected your deep self? My deep self? Yes. Do you know why your name is Constitution? Because I constitute? That's right. And what do you reflect with this constitutional form? The political will of the people, the foundations of the laws, institutions, governments. And have you really reflected the will of the people? No, I don't think so. Then, who came up with this foundation? It was you? No. Then who was it? I don't know. Think, because you do know. It was... it was my father. There you go. Let's find the source of your trauma. As you remember things, try not to analyze them. If you have sensations in your pages, let yourself feel them. You are in a safe space. Where are you? In the street. There is no one out and it's night time. I'm in front of a residential building. What else do you see? A truck? It's coming towards me, carrying six men with weapons. The military. Maybe you don't remember, but you were conceived in dictatorship. Keep going. I'm inside an apartment. It's austere, it looks like a cloister. On the wall, there's a crucifix that seems to illuminate the hallway. In the distance, I hear a loud sound. Keep going. I'm in the back room. There's a man with his back towards me, sitting at a desk. He's alone. There's nothing else. What's he doing? Writing. What's he writing? He's writing me. Where are you? I'm trapped. In a typewriter, the man firmly presses the keys into me. What's the man like? Pale, with a broad body, very white. He has almost no hair. He wears huge glasses and has tiny eyes. He's looking at me from above. He's writing very passionately. I hear him whispering things. Who is it? He's my father. You will end the overflowing chaos that brought this Mars's plague. You will be the creative impulse that makes people free and not slaves to the state. He's talking about me. So good. Thanks. Um, so weird to listen to us talking in English. <laughs> it's so good. Um, Maria, tell us how you went from this final episode of the podcast which is so amazing and stimulating of so many ideas to the short film that we are minutes away from its UK premiere. Yes so after the production of this last chapter we wanted to explore uh, what it would be like to transfer this to a life experience like as a, a performance for example. So we imagine a sort of a collective concert after so many months locked up uh, at home uh, in the pandemic at the end of last year. So we did a small residency in an art center in Santiago, but then soon we realized that with the pandemic still raging, um, it would be impossible to create a live event. So then we decided to work for the camera and to do really a, an audiovisual piece. Um, 
at the beginning of this year, we started writing the, um, the script that emerged out of intimate experiences, dreams, and thoughts of our transdisciplinary team. We also work with um, another filmmaker and an actor that is a script writer as well, and a, um, a team of designers. Um, so we try to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be lost in a country without a defined roadmap? Um, and we came with this question, where are we standing? We asked ourselves also which direction we wanted to go after the, pandem the pandemic, both as artists and as a country. And after also seeing all the structures that governed us, uh, our lives had fallen apart. So where are we going now? And this short film follows the last minutes of a dying constitution that is struggling to survive and maintain its voice. It is an immersive and surreal journey that, that mixes digital art, found footage and collaboration of other filmmakers and our own filming. And yes, it will take us inside our fears, beliefs about uncertainty, loss and memory. So now we invited you to watch this experimental short film, which is a premiere in the UK. The duration is around 13 minutes. So if you can use um, earphones, will be better. So will be a better experience. Yeah, for sure. And if you want to listen to the podcast also with earphones, it would be an amazing experience. <laughs> 